All right, Tracy, thanks. And now for the latest on the coronavirus in Arizona. The number of new cases continues trending down. The Department of Health Services announced about 1,200 new cases yesterday. However, almost 150 deaths also being announced. The good news, though, more people are getting vaccinated. Almost 1.1 million people have at least one shot in the state of Arizona, and 413,000 of them are fully vaccinated. Well, COVID cases are falling, more vaccines are being given, and a new vaccine may soon enter the mix. We have a lot of questions regarding all of this, and we know you do too. That's why we brought in the expert, Dr. Frank Lavecchio with Valleywise Health Medical Center this morning to help us answer all of yours and our questions on COVID-19. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thank you. All right, so first thing after spiking following the holidays, COVID-19 cases and hospital metrics are now falling. So what do you think's behind this? Do you think it's vaccines? Do you think it's change in lifestyle, something else? You know, first off, the data is true. I mean, what we see in the hospital is it's much easier to get hospital beds, a little bit more relaxed atmosphere, but it's probably at least threefold. One, about 10% of people in Arizona have been vaccinated. About 20% of us have had it. And there's been no other big event. There hasn't been, you know, some a Thanksgiving or a New Year's Eve or any event. The closest we came is a Super Bowl, which I think was kind of kept in check. So it has a lot to do with it, and probably most importantly is the seasonality. We don't quite understand how seasonal this is going to be and when it's going to peak and when it's not going to peak like most viruses. All right, so right now we have those two COVID-19 vaccines which are being used in the U.S. right now, the Pfizer and the Moderna. But this week, an FDA advisory committee is going to vote on whether Johnson & Johnson's vaccine should become the third. It's one dose versus two. So some people are wondering it's if, if it's even worth getting it if you get it approved. What, what are your thoughts on this? Do you know much about it at this point? Mm -hmm. I, I only know what's written and what's written in medical journals and what my colleagues, et cetera, are saying who read about it. And the great thing about it, as you said, is that it's one dose. So one and done. You don't need the second dose. You don't have to schedule for the second dose, unlike the other two that are out right now. It's also kept at refrigerator temperature. You don't need the exotic refrigerators, these exotic GPS machines following the vaccines around. So that's pretty amazing. You know, it's probably going to be a game changer. The negative that we hear about is it's only 66% effective. And I say only because that's a, still a great number. That would be a home run for any sort of flu vaccine, for example. Remember, all three of the vaccines, though, when they get released, with regard to death and hospitalizations, bring it down to about you know zero percent, or they're one hundred percent effective in present, preventing death and hospitalizations two weeks after you get them. So you know even though you hear sixty six percent and people are a little tentative, a lot of that data comes from other parts of the world where some of these variants were around, and maybe the J and J vaccine did not work as well as get against the variants. So new research just published yesterday out of Canada reveals that more than half of healthcare workers report their sense of smell has not returned to normal five months after having COVID and that five to 20% of post COVID patients suffer from long term smell loss. So is there any way of getting your sense of smell back? All right, you know, and, and it's a it's a great study. It was done in healthcare workers because uh, you know, I guess a lot of them are tech savvy and we kind of go with the apps and it was, a, it was pretty robust. It was about 2,500 healthcare workers. And it turned out when asked, about 85% of them said they lost some degree of, of taste or smell. And after six months, uh, only 5% of them still had a loss of that. So the good news is it's going to come back in most people. You know, hopefully, you know, we can't say in those 5% if it's going to come back. There's all these little hacks that you see that kind of make no sense. Um, to me, they have no harm. One of them is burning an orange. That's probably the most common one. You know, you burn an orange, you know, on your stove, and then you kind of inhale the fumes, and, and then it kind of goes away. I don't think it would go away. I think it's a very noxious smell that you would pick up this, you know, sensitive sort of smell where normally it would be really bad. You'd be like, oh, this is terrible, or this is really potent. But, you know, if you get this noxious smell and you have some degree of smell or taste loss, you know, you might pick it up. So no proof that it works. Mm -hmm. If you do one of these things, make sure you're safe. Obviously, you know, yeah. be safe when you're burning things on your stove. 
Yeah, that TikTok video looked a little uh, scary. <laughs> Maybe it's just if something it. smells bad enough, then you will <laughs> smell it. You will eventually smell it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dr. Lavecchio, stick exactly. around. we got a long way to go with you all morning long. Text your questions. If you want to ask the good doctor anything, 602-444-1212. We'll get to as many questions as we can this morning. And we know there's a lot to keep track of when it comes to COVID-19. So to stay on top of the latest information, you can download our free 12 News app. All right, let's get you up to speed now on the story.